What's going on guys, no guides here, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I've got a defense tutorial, I'm going to walk through some of the main metas that you're probably going to come up against in team in this season, main things that elite players are doing that's what's ultimately costing you, because I know sometimes you're only losing by one or two goals, but I'm going to go through some defensive mistakes that gold tier players make a lot. So if you're pushing to elite for the first time, this video might help, but even if you're pushing to gold for the first time, it's good to get these habits out of the way. So these are some simple things that you can implement into your gameplay that can help you be more stable defensively and ultimately concede less goals goals and get more wins maybe get that leap for the first time especially now during team this season we're going to start with one of the most common mistakes i'll see and this is one of the most common things an elite player will do you probably witnessed this yourself i'm sure you've probably seen this so here for example the elite player will get the ball get the ball with a lamb now normally what elite what a normal player i would say gold gold plus they'll normally just run forward and try to play it what an elite player would probably do is probably do a one two what you're doing by doing a one two you're doing two things a you're forcing this player to either mark a run or the mark the runner in this case, or B, you're going to open more space because remember, your opponent can only select one player at a time. So this is a very good move to do. The key thing is, as you can see, my opponent here was so aggressive. He came out and he got taken and a simple one, two, and that's it, he got beaten. And this is a common mistake I see a lot of gold tier players make. And you don't want to get yourself in this position because what players will do is they'll work their way back to the outside of the box. Get the ball here and they'll very simply play a pass to their striker, do a scoop turn or fake shot and score a goal. I'm pr pretty sure you've had goals like that score against you. So how do you defend against it? Well, the key is in the initial perspective over here. Once you're over here, as the opponent, if, as I'm not saying you should stand still. If you want to apply pressure, you can. But the key thing is you don't want to apply too much pressure. In my opinion, I would apply pressure like this and I'll curb my run away and I'll go back again. The reason why I'll do that is there's still a passing option to Ben Yedda. So in order for me to apply pressure, I would want to go alongside that, almost cut the passing lane out a little bit, apply pressure and then run back. The reason why is you just want to act as a deterrent. Go towards him a little bit, but then just run back. Don't leave a massive gap in your back line. So for example, like here, as you can see my opponent, go forward like this. By this point, just don't either hold your line or kind of run back, but don't overcommit. You see how he overcommits towards me? And then what happens is a simple ball roll here. And then once you see someone does a ball roll and they face this way, once you see the pass go back, the next thing you have to do is you have to run back. Do not try to run and cut the passing lane off here. This is a big no-no. Always run to where the ball is going to be. Remember, you're in front of the ball. If you try to run like this and cut the passing lane, most of the time your opponent can play the ball around. For example, like here, as you can see, my opponent he was aggressive. He tried to cut the passing lane out. It was almost stuck in no man's land. And a simple through ball was beaten and I was simply through in behind. But the key thing is, if you want to be aggressive, you be aggressive a little bit. For example, like here, be aggressive. Then here, hold your line and don't go forward anymore. Don't go forward anymore. At this point, once you see your opponent does a pass backwards, you just run back. You run backwards and go back into a right back position. As you can see, this player is over committing and that's how you concede goals, especially down the wing. Stop your opponent from going down the wing in the first place and track the run. Think about it logically as well. Don't forget, sometimes when you have the ball, your opponent have the ball with a with left back and they'll do a one, two down the wing. Also, when the ball gets played, you never want to run like this. Because a lot of times I see, if for example, the ball gets played, for example, to over here, a lot of players will try to basically, will try to kind of cut the passing lane very acutely. This is the wrong thing to do. Now, in some some respect, it's right to run back. You want to run back in acute, but you see, if you cut out over here, if you miss the ball, your opponent can get the ball and then he's in behind and he can very simply go into the box, score or sweat the ball in. The key thing is you want to run back. And this is what I'd recommend for, for players that are below elite, just run back. Run back here because he has to eventually match up against you. There's no point taking the earlier risk of trying to catch the ball early and then your opponent almost running past you or kind of beating you. Just run back. This way you're stopping your opponent from beating you and also it's going to give you time for your opponent, maybe your CDM to come back and help you reinforce. So never ever overcommit. The general rule of thumb, always run to where the ball is going to be, not where the ball is. As you go up in higher tiers, once you get to elite, you can start understanding pattern plays and then you can start predicting. But for now, just run back. Always be safe rather than being sorry. Now, one of the most common things I don't see as well is using your CDM to defend. Typically speaking, in this situation you might find yourself in quite a lot. You might, there might not be a CDM nearby and a CDM's out of position. Now there's two things you could do here. Sometimes you might want to switch to your other CDM and sometimes you want to just recover and almost occupy the area. You never want to break your back four. You never want to make your back fours like what I like to call being naked essentially so they've got no support with them. You want your back four to have players around them at all the time. And the key thing is you don't want to drag a player out of position. Sometimes you may be forced to select the nearest player. That's fine. The biggest mistake I see players below elite make over here is they start being overly aggressive. 
So what they will do is they'll see the pass over here, then they'll just start over committing. Now you see what you've done here is now you've made a back three. So now you have essentially a four on three situation. The problem is once you're aggressive, there's now a gap here. So if he happens to do a one, two, he could potentially get a through ball in behind and you could be very much in trouble. The key thing is just to run back. So apply the initial pressure, but then just run back, run back and hold your line. You see that a lot of players below gold, what they will do is as soon as this pass is being made and they make a mistake, they panic. They start panicking and they start being overly aggressive and they start, for example, like if the pass is made over here, they start over committing. If my opponent decides to pass backwards, they'll over commit. You see here, as soon as I realize my opponent is facing away from goal, there's no passing option available. I just run back, literally just run back. And as you can see, he has to slow down and I change to my CDM and I defend my CDM. So what I'm doing here is I'm again here. Running back, securing the back line, change to my CDM and then using my CDM. It's really important you get right stick switching, unlock and L1 switching. The most important thing is never to be over aggressive, never over commit, never, never give your opponent opportunity and over commit. The situation you might find in yourself in a lot, it's a question I get asked a lot is what if the CDMs are beaten? So this for example, a situation I'm playing a 4-2-3-1 as you can see. My opponent plays a very good through ball and I didn't mark it in time and now he split, split my players now. As you can see, that's my two CDMs and he's got my his two strikers in behind. My back four is like what I like to call naked. And now the key thing here is you can do two things. If you want to apply pressure, you can, but you have to run back. Now, I wouldn't recommend this unless you really know what you're doing. In my opinion, because you might see a lot of people do this, it's because they know how to create covering runs. But if you're not that great at defending, what you want to do is just hold your ground. Do not run to your opponent. Just literally just hold your ground. All you got to do is hold your ground, literally, because your opponent is far away. All he has to do now is let him come towards you. If you see a chance that your opponent on a 1-2 and he sticks his hand out and you see, okay, this guy's doing a through ball, then just run back and then change to your CDM. You see that? So what I'm doing is anticipating. I see over here, he makes the pass. I see him making a run. Now look, I just go back, my center back. See, I'm just walking back. And then I change to my CDM when the chance is available. Sometimes your CDM may be too far away. For example, here, I try to change to my CDM. Even though that's team of the year, Kante, I realize at this point, Kante is too far away. There's not imminent danger. But again, I'm not being too aggressive. I'm just holding my line, holding my line. See, I'm not pushing. I'm letting him come. Because remember, he has to come towards you. Can you shoot from here? No, if you want to take a long shot from here, let him take his chances, like 100 chances that shot's going to go in, especially from here. I'm just holding my line, running back. Then once the situation where my CDM is viable to change to, then I select my CDM. But the key thing here is do not ever run towards your opponent. If you're getting contact for whatever reason, just run back. If your CDMs get beaten, just run back here. Try. If your CDM is close, try running back with him. If your CDM is too far away, which sometimes that does happen in this question you guys ask me a lot. Okay, what if I can't select my CDM then? Then just hold your line. Do not be aggressive, do not run back. Just run back and secure the center. Always go to where your opponent is going to be and naturally wait for your team to reinforce and then select your CDM. In real life football, when someone's running it behind, do you ever see the center back just running towards the striker? No, you don't. They run back, they wait for the teammate to reinforce and they delay the opponent. Here is a situation where we use the CDMs again. Never want to run out with your center back. Here, I use my CDM and I run back with my CDM first. That's why player relative or Ball relative, whichever player switching you want to use. I use ball relative. But the most important thing is make sure you have your player switching on air balls. You need to learn right stick switching. Change to my CDM. If you want to get above goal two, you need to learn right stick switching here. I'm using my CDM. I'm running back with my CDM now. Look, I'm running back my CDM. Now again, now you see here, the key thing is knowing when to be aggressive. Now as you can see, I know there's two strikers in behind. So I don't become aggressive towards my position. I just run back. You see that? I'm almost man marking the striker. You see that? I'm man marking the striker. Can I get the ball? Okay, now I get beaten. Again, now here, I'm looking at this striker and I'm looking at, okay, there's gaps in behind. Now let me just run and recover. You see, I'm running and recovering. And again, over here, at this point, I look at this play and I'm thinking, okay, you know what? He can pass the ball to Royce and he can do a fake shot. So you see, I'm cutting that passing lane. You see, the key thing is you always want to keep your opponent at bay. See, what I see a lot of players doing when they're in goal to is they just try to hound your opponent with a CDM. That is a good thing to do, but there is limits. For example, like you need to realize what's the imminent danger. You need to work out, okay, for example, over here, Werner. Okay, I see there's another person in behind. Let me try getting that person. So you can see over here, that's a striker, man marking the striker. Once I'm near the ball, okay, I'm thinking, okay, you know what? Let me try getting the ball. It doesn't work out. That's fine. Again, I don't keep being aggressive. I just run back. I'm running back to the middle. You see that? Once Werner gets the ball, I'm thinking, okay, you can pass the ball to the striker. If I let him pass back, I don't want him to pass forward. So I want to mark this passing lane. 
I don't care if he passes backwards. That's why I'm not being aggressive towards him. So again, I'm anticipating where the danger zone is. And I'm running to cut the passing lane into his main striker. Because if he makes a pass to his striker, he can do a fixture on either side to potentially beat me and score a goal. So it's really important to understand where the imminent danger is. I normally like to mark the strikers first. So if you're ever in doubt, just run back. Now the question you're going to ask me is, when do you be aggressive? Well, this is a debatable one. It just happens with experience. As you play the game more and more, you'll learn when to be aggressive. Obviously, it depends on how fast the players are as well. Here you can see my back four is basically now naked. As you can see, uh, my CDM is nowhere in sight. Now here, I take a risk. I become aggressive because I know there's a good chance of me winning the ball and I intercept the ball. Sometimes this will happen. And if, for example, I didn't win the ball here, I'll tell you what I'll do. If I didn't win the ball and I lost the ball, Instead of what, what you want to do with the second player is you don't want to be aggressive. You just want to run back. See, what people will do is they'll be aggressive with the first player. Now, once the first player is out of position, that's it. With the second player, you need to recover. The key thing is you don't be overly aggressive, run towards him. Just run backwards. Because when you run backwards, you're going to delay your opponent. And then your, your other center back who's out of position, he will naturally run back to his position. That's all you've got to do, literally. As soon as you're one, your first one, so let's say, for example, you, you make the interception here, you become aggressive. If you don't win the ball, just change to your other, other center back and literally don't be aggressive. Literally just run back or hold your line. Do not be aggressive. And I'm pretty sure most times not you'll recover and your center back will come back into position. Now, on that note is rebound. It's something people always ask me, you know what, what's the point of tackling if I get if the ball just gets rebounded back to my opponent? Well, that is also very true as well. That's why you want to use the running jockey. So the running jockey is an example that I find myself in quite a lot. I'm using the running jockey, I see Werner. I see there's this two strikers that are the two danger men. So instead of marking Werner, I start man marking the striker. You see that? I'm running back, cutting a passing lane. I'm basically stopping him. I'm basically acting as a visual deterrent and stopping him from passing the ball to that striker. So as you can see, he makes the pass downward. See? I'm forcing him to make the less dangerous pass. Once you're over here again, I try, try to be aggressive. I can see Veron is with the ball. And again, I'm occupying the space, trying to block the striker out. If you pass the ball to Werner, now when, it, when the ball gets passed to Werner, I'm thinking immediately, okay, you know what? If he passes the ball now and there's a fake shot, there is a really, really high chance he can score. So the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, you know what? I need to cut this passing lane as soon as possible. So I do that. He doesn't make the pass for some reason. And here, I find a situation where Veron can, the pass can be made to Veron. But I know at this situation, Werner is right-footed. Now, Werner, he's facing directly towards goal. Now, if Werner was at a 45-degree angle and he took a finesse shot, there is a risk. There is obviously a risk that your opponent can score. Probably very unlikely he would score. But again, here, I knew I had time to advance. The angle was too off. Even if you took a shot from here, such a low chance of it going in. As soon as he makes the angle, a 45-degree angle, see, I block the angle towards goal. You see that? So if he does finesse it, hopefully my goalkeeper will stop it. Or very least, my player will stop it. Then I'd be aggressive. Then as you can see, the ball gets deflected away. But the key thing is, I don't panic. I still control Blanc. And again, once the ball gets picked up now with Casemiro, I know Casemiro, he can't shoot. He's a CDM. I don't have to be aggressive towards him. So I just hold the line. I'm man-marking Werner. Now what I'm doing, I'm doing two things. I'm pushing Casemiro away from the goal. The danger area is always the center because your opponent can always shoot or let's say you can go near post and shoot. But if Casemiro is, for example, over here, there's no need to overcommit towards him. Just hold your line. He has to eventually come back to the middle. So don't overcommit. It's to watch over here. Casemiro turns around. And again, look, I go on the inside. I go to the danger zone. Again, I'm pushing him away from goal. Now here, he turns upwards. Now again, I'm not chasing him now. Because I don't... See, the biggest mistake people do is they start chasing him from behind. There's no point chasing him because he's just going to get through. So watch my positioning. Instead of chasing him over, he turns around. I just run back to the danger man. I can see Werner. He can do a pass to Werner. So I go and I just run back and occupy this position. You see that? And that's it. I hold my line. Again, I'm pushing him on the wide area. If Casemiro wants to shoot. Now, if this was someone like Team of the Year, Ronaldo or R9 or Neymar, it's a bit of a different situation. But with Casemiro, he's not going to shoot from here. Let's be realistic. And if he does, then good luck to him. Again, I'm occupying the area. You see that now here? Again, people here, they become aggressive. I'm not being aggressive. I know that you can make a pass back to this player anytime, turn and shoot. So again, I occupy the space. You see that? I'm, I stop the passing lane. If he wants to turn around and go around, then that's fine. I'll react to that. But again, you see that? I'm not running too aggressive towards him. I'm just holding my base. See, look at this. Now, this situation over here, he's running back. That's fine. I'm not running towards him. I'm just running back. Then I occupy the striker. You see that? 
You see how I'm holding my position. You see, I'm not being overly aggressive. See here, going away from goal, holding my line. Here, I can see he can make a pass to this person. So I cut that pass lane out. Here, I see the pass lane's open again. He tried baiting me. So I cut it out as soon as I can. You see that? I'm always knowing where the goal is and I'm always making sure I have the danger, danger zone on lock. Now remember, this is the meta. The meta is basically getting the ball to a CDM, passing the ball to one of your strikers, wherever it is, for example, like Ben Yedda, turning or Richarlison turning and shooting. That is the meta. That's why you need to always understand that the strikers are the most dangerous players. Most players that I find in foot champions, they once they get into this position, they're only looking for two players. In a 4-4-2, they're looking for two strikers. In the 4-1-2-1-2, or let's say, for example, the 4-2-3-1, they're looking for the cam or one of the two strikers. So always try to occupy and mark that passing lane as opposed to running towards your opponent. Always be proactive and understand where the danger is first. Now, sometimes you could be also caught out of position. The key thing is don't panic. Here's a situation over here where my opponent is running towards me. It's 45 minutes. Um, I don't want to score. I don't want to concede a goal just before halftime. But I'm also numerically outnumbered over here. You can see, well not numerically outnumbered, but you can see there's a person down the wing. I got these two guys also free. I got, um, I got almost like a back three temporarily. And I also got these other two players. So I'm, I'm basically outnumbered in midfield. The key thing is now what I don't want to do is I don't want to be aggressive and run towards my opponent. If I run towards my opponent now, there is a big chance he's going to completely outnumber me. So again here, I just hold the line. I kind of almost run back a little bit and just hold the line. Now sometimes you might try to be aggressive, but the key thing is you don't be, remember I said you kind of curve your run like that, apply a little bit of pressure to force him to make a pass, but just run back. Don't overcommit. Take a little bit, just kind of act as a vegetarian, almost so I'm cutting that pass lane out. So what I did over here, I saw the danger. I saw the through ball. I saw the, so as soon as I saw the hand movement over here, look, I saw the hand movement. So I kind of went forward a little bit, then I curved back around and I held my line. Situation here, I found I was in trouble. Now, at this point, I didn't mind taking him down because I was like, you know what? Let me take a yellow card. Sometimes you can take a yellow card. Be safe. Now, the key thing is when you take a yellow card, well, obviously don't do it in the first five minutes. At this point, it was half time. I knew I was outnumbered numerically. So I took a foul and I gave it, and I gave it away. You know, it's fine. You can take a foul on them. It's not, there's nothing saying you can't. It's a very good tactical foul, especially in 90 minutes. If your opponent is in behind, I would most likely nine times out of 10 take a tactical foul. Bring him down if you're in doubt. But obviously don't do this. Be careful how you bring him down. Don't take him out from completely behind. It's 45 minutes. The last thing you want is a red card as well. So be very careful when you do a through ball. Um, even though it looks like a it looks like a red card over here. But actually, the way the tackle was, it was actually a yellow card. I knew we'll just clip him if that makes sense. Then once you get a free kick, defend the free kick. What I like to do with defend the free kicks is a lot of people they like to pass the free kicks. I like to reposition my players. So what I'll do is they might do a free kick setup where they might be in a second and third kick taker. One might run over the ball. So I anticipate this. He didn't do it this time, but I anticipate it here. I, I, I put a player back over here. So if he does make a pass, I can read it. Then I also use the right analog stick and I switch to a player in a war. I don't know if you know this, but you can use the right analog stick. Switch to a player in a war, as you can see. I switch to a player in a war. And if you hold the running jockey button, you can actually bring that player out of the wall. So as you can see, I bring Nedved out of the wall and I anticipate the pass is being made. And I basically bring him out of the wall, secure the center, and that way I push him astray. Again, not being aggressive, I'm just holding the line. See, I'm holding the line here, running back, see, with Richarlison running back. And that is the key. When you're defending, if you're ever in doubt, just hold your line and run back. If your opponent is inside the box, a different situation, you have to go in and make a tackle. But the key thing is, stop getting in that position in the first place. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, these are just some quick tips that I thought might help you um, defensively when you're struggling. And especially some situations that people have been talking over, like, you know, what do I do when someone plays a through ball down the wing? What do I do when this happens? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.